What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another podcast episode. Today, guys, we have a really special guest. She is going to be helping us strengthen and sharpen our sales acumen today. She's going to come with a ton of sales tips. And the topic of the conversation is no actually means maybe. So without further ado, I want to introduce Deborah Driggs to the show. How are you, Deborah? Hi. Hi, Henry. Thank you so much for having me. I'm great. Oh, man. I'm I am great. I am so excited to jump into this conversation because besides branding, besides design and, and, and marketing, I am a, a sales junkie, if you will. Like, I just love the sales process. I love the sales conversation. I'm always trying to be better at sales um, and not make it not make me come off so salesy or, or pushy or that kind of salesy, but like make it more of a consultative, more of a position where I'm like more of a trusted advisor than somebody trying to sell somebody something, right? So like you just hit it on the nail, the word trusted advisor. And that is the whole thing, man. You want to build rapport with people. You want them to like you. And I always say it's not, I, I'm not a salesy person. I, most of my clients have become my friends. And I think that's the whole gig. You know, it's like you want to build rapport you, and you just hit it. Like I said, trusted advisor. When people trust you and they like you, they're going to do business with you. It's that simple, really. And, you know, I was, I, I was kind of chuckling to myself. I always get a kick out of this. But I didn't go to college. And I talk to entrepreneurs today, you know, because I'm very I'm a curious mind. And I always say, like, when you hire people, is it really a big deal now for them to have a college degree? Like, because I remember back in the day, it really was. And they look at me and they go, no, we want the person that's like the powerhouse, the, you know, and, and it always kind of makes me feel good. I, and no, no disrespect to college degrees, but, you know, I don't have one and I barely graduated high school and I really had to hustle you know, and I had to learn and make mistakes the hard way. And so I was chuckling when you're like, she's coming in with a ton of ideas. Yeah, I'm coming in with a ton of ideas of what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we all learn. We all learn sometimes the hard way. And that's what makes us the people that we are today. That's what those experiences and those lessons make us who we are today. So I wanted to just give some, give the audience a quick little background. I, I want you to establish your credibility here right now so that people stick around and say, you know what? I, I got to be listening to this conversation. So give us a little background quickly on how you've gotten to this expertise and why you're so passionate about it. So, you know, my background, if, if you Google me, my background is I was a model actress for years, you know, I grew up kind of in the entertainment business. My mom had me doing commercials when I was really young. And then I ended up on the cover of Playboy and ended up being a Playboy Playmate centerfold. And, you know, when that all came to an end and then I went through my divorce, I had to reinvent myself. I had to work. I didn't I didn't leave my marriage with this huge marriage settlement. I had to work and and I had three young children. And so the first thing I did was I got my real estate license. And I was living in a second home market in Park City, Utah. And I remember going, I was studied really hard because there's a lot of math on the real estate test. And I remember I studied so hard and I was so nervous to take this test. And it turned out I, I did the best on the math portion of the test. And that's just because I applied myself and really worked really hard. So that was the first time for me where I was like, hey, I'm smart. I'm not just a the girl next door, a funny girl. I'm actually really smart. And and I started having real success. And then as you know, 2008 came around and boom, another another turn in my life. And I had to reinvent again because second home market was the first thing to stop mm. in real estate. And so I had a friend in Beverly Hills that I had known and his company actually did my life insurance. And I went to him and I said, hey, just came up with an idea, you know, hey, if I can refer business to you, can I make money? And he's like, go get your license. And I was like, oh, yeah. So again, I go back to the drawing board and I studied really hard and got my license, passed that test first first round. And 
I ended up, you know, I just took out my phone and called everybody. Mm. And that's why, you know, it's all about trust and rapport. And I said, look, I know you don't look at me this way, but you know, here's what I'm doing. So that's kind of my background is, you know, how I transitioned from being in the entertainment world to all of a sudden being in the top 5% salespeople in the United States in life insurance. And it's, you know, I hustled. Which I is a tough everybody. sell. It's a tough sell life insurance. It is because, you know, people either want it or they don't. It's like, there's no in between. And also, you know, it was to my advantage because I had this entertainment background that I was able to call a lot of people in the entertainment world. And so a lot of my clients actually need life insurance to go on tour to do. So I had a lot of, you know, not luck, but I just was fortunate because I had those connections and I was really careful how I used them. Sure. Sure. It's important. I mean, you have to leverage your resources. I mean, I think that's, Absolutely. that's part of being an entrepreneur is understanding what your resources are and how you can allocate them, how you can delegate them accordingly and, and wisely. Yeah. yeah. And my biggest challenge wasn't so much studying and taking tests and trying to become the expert in my field. My biggest challenge, ironically, was having people look at me differently, you know, oh, she's not just this model actress, because a lot of people know me from that time in my life. And those are a lot of my clients now. And so that was my biggest challenge. They're like, okay, really, you're selling life insurance? Like, really? And I was like, yes, I am. And let me tell you why. And, you know, and then I would explain, you know, why I believed in it so much. And I remember my first pitch was, you know, I talked a lot about 9-11, like these unexpected life events. People ask me, what do you do? Well, I sell life insurance. What do you really do? I prepare people for unexpected life events, mm. you know, and that's a whole different pitch, you know, then people are like, well, wait a minute. What, 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 how do you do that? You know? And I said, well, I use this little thing called life insurance. Right. And so then people are a little bit more interested when they, they hear it differently. It's not just a salesy, a salesy pitch, but yeah, nine 11, you know, a lot of people, did not have life insurance. And, you know, that was the first, you know, like that kind of, I, I use that as my sales pitch. I don't anymore, but, but that is a way to kind of, you know, when you look at unexpected life events, you just never know. And yeah. it can happen not just with that big of a tragedy, but with any tragedy. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it is life insurance is very hard to sell. And you know, and I, you know, I, you have to love what you sell too. You know, right. that's the other thing. So whatever you're selling, I don't care what it is. You know, if you're selling some weird plant device, I don't know, whatever it right. is, it's something that's so crazy, but you have to love what you're selling. And, and I also have life insurance. So I talk about that as well. Let's get down and dirty with this stuff. I love when I was checking out your bio, you had, you had mentioned that you had this little saying, and no means maybe. And so I wanted to dive into that today and figure out how do we get to a maybe, but then how do we push the maybe into a yes, right? So sure. walk us through this. This is going to be fun. Well, so you have to really have a good sense of humor, first of all. You cannot take yourself seriously, you know? And I learned that right off the bat. It was like, okay. And I had a boss. I actually, in between my real estate and my life insurance, I worked for a print company out of New York. And so I was in this print procurement. And, you know, when, when he hired me, I'm like, I don't know if I know anything about print. And he's like, Did, you sold real estate, you can sell print. And it was really basically the same idea of sales. And I remember he would say to me, you are known as the next girl. Because when something didn't go through, I'd go next I wouldn't even think about it for five seconds more. I would not allow myself to go, oh my God, I didn't get that $50 million deal. You know, I would just say next because how I work is really about energy, right? If I sit and focus on all the why I didn't get that deal, that's what I'm putting out into the energy. And I was like, I'm not going to sit there and do that. I'm going to say next and focus on the next one. And then I'm telling the universe that everything's going to work out. And so I know that's a little foo-foo-y for some people. I love but it. That's that, but that's how I work, really. I mean, honestly, that's... And so when 
when I say no means maybe, it started with I called a friend of mine who's who was he used to run Warner Brothers. He was the head of Warner Brothers, and I called him up and I said, "Hey, I'm selling life insurance. If I get you as a client, I know you'll refer me to, you know, lots of people in the industry." And I said, "I need to get you as a client," and he's like, "Deborah, I have life insurance. I'm not going to switch." And I said, "Okay, listen." If I can lower your premiums, will you switch to me? You know, and I just kept going. And he's like, no. And I said, okay, I'll call you next week. And he like started laughing on the phone. He's like, Deborah, I just said no. And I go, I know, but things can change. And he just laughed. And sure enough, I called him next week. And he's like, okay, look. (laughs) And this is a true story. He's like, okay, look, because I was hungry too. You have to understand, I was very hungry. And I said, I called him the next week and I go, I'm calling again. Did anything change? And he's like, okay, what do you want to do? And I said, can I just do an audit? Let me just do an audit. And if I can reduce your premiums, you have no choice but to switch to me. He's like, do the audit. And from that day, I wrote it down. No means maybe. And it became my line for everything. And anytime anybody would say no in my head, I'd go, it's maybe. (laughs) Wow. What a great story. I love these little stories. These, I could listen to these all day long. Like, I love that. I love that. So you are, he he became my client and he did refer me quite a bit of business. And because he said to people, she's not going to give up. So just do it. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't even have to sell myself. That's what he told people. Oh man. I love it. I love it. Okay. So cool is that? It's fantastic. Let's have a, a, a discussion. Let's have a fun discussion about this, though. So you are very persistent, and I love that. I love. I love that. I I have a different perspective, and please, if you can change my mind today, like it would be, it would, I'll never forget this. So I live by this philosophy: I only want to work with people that want to work with me. Okay. If I get somebody that gives me a hard no, or they give me the runaround, or they give me all the excuses, I'm like this. Okay. Bye. And, but I'm like you, where I'm like, next. I'm not going to, I'm not going to wait around. I'm not going to waste my time trying to convince you. I'm out. Right. So there's, there's, well, yeah, I'd like to change your perspective please. on that just a little bit. Please, okay. please. So, so yeah, I don't discount anybody. And here's the reason why. There's You'd be discounting a lot of energy out there. And here's the deal. A lot of people take a long time to warm up. And so what I've realized is, is you know, not everybody's going to want to do business with me. But here's the deal. And this is what's happened in my life. And this is what's beautiful is that those people have come back around in my life in a different way. And you never know, even though they don't want to do maybe this business with you, you never know if you're going to end up partnering up with one of those people for something else. And you'd never know what the plan is. So for me, when people don't want to do life insurance, that's okay. I don't, because I'm here to give. So if I discount that person that doesn't want to do life insurance with me, I'm missing the whole, for me, I'm missing the whole thing because what if I decide one day I'm not going to sell life insurance anymore and I want to do something else? I may end up calling that person back and saying, hey, you know what? I was really interested in what you do and I'm not selling life insurance anymore. And so you, you never know where this game, you know, and this whole sales and this whole thing is a spiritual game. Talk to me about that. And, Cause I, and, I'm, so, I'm big into it, believe it or not. Oh, good. Yeah. Am, because it really is, you know, I think money and work and sales and all of this, it's a spiritual game. And I have the biggest, you know, and I've had to learn hard lessons to get to this mindset. Mm-hmm. So now when I meet people, I take the biggest interest in them because I never know when the tables are going to shift. And I'm going to give you a great story about this. So when I I told you I did that little print procurement job for about 17 months and, you know, I have connections. And so he said to me, well, who can you get who, you know, I was living in New York, working for this company. And by the way, everybody should work in New York for at least a year because that'll really change your whole 
perspective. We'll get back to that. But anyway, so I, I said, well, who do you want to get into? And he gave me some examples. And he said, Revlon, I know Ron Perlman. And I said, but here's the deal. I'm really careful how I use my connections. And so I go about it a roundabout way. I get in with Ron. Ron goes, you got 10 minutes. What do you got? He brought me in. This is a true story. He brought me into a room. He wouldn't even let me go into his office. He brought me into a room with his assistant. He said, you got 10 minutes. What do you want? I said, all I want is I want to get in with the head of procurement, whoever does all your packaging. That's it. I don't want to waste your time. He goes, done. Set her up with the head of procurement. That was the end of that. The head of procurement, his name was Ronald Cohen. I think his name was Ronald Cohen. It's been a while. He didn't want to do business with us. He didn't want to do business with me. Okay. I didn't discount him. I didn't, I didn't take offense to it at all. I just, whatever, you know, that's, that was what it was at the time. It was a big account and he didn't want to change accounts and come with me. Cut to when I left the print business, I'm now successful life agent and I'm posting some of my success, you know, I'm top of the table, million dollar round table, whatever on LinkedIn. He reaches out to me, he says, I left Revlon. And are there any people that you can introduce me to? Because I'm moving to Los Angeles. This is a spiritual game. The guy that was the head of procurement for Revlon did not want to do business with me. And now he's asking for my help. It's a spiritual game. So you never want to burn bridges. You never know who's who you're going to partner up with, who's going to come back into your life, who's going to ask you for help, who you are going to go to for help. So I meet a lot of very interesting people. 80% of them do not want to do business with me. That's the fact of sales. Anybody that's in sales knows you meet 100 people, you're going to get 20 that want to do business with you. Maybe if you're lucky. Mm. That's, the fa- that's a fact. Mm-hmm. So the other 80 people, why not get to know them? There might come a day down the road where you're going to go, hey, wait a minute, I met this person. You know, and it's going to have this light bulb go off, you know, and it's going to be, I'm going to reach back out. I just think in life, you never know. And I've had things just come full circle like that Revlon story. You know, he's reaching out to me now for help. He wanted nothing to do with me as as a print procurement person, right? He's like, no, we're not going to do business with you. If I would have taken that personally, we wouldn't be friends today. This is fantastic. I love that. Uh, Listen, this is why creating, and I'm going to get a little techie here. I'm going to get a little digital marketing here for a second, but it's very important. This is one of the big reasons why everyone should be building their email list because they may not, you may not do business with that person today, but if they're on your list and you stay consistent, sending emails, you know, frequently, you know, you don't have to be as crazy as I am. I, I send three, three emails, like three, four emails a week, right? But you don't have to be as frequent, but if you just stay in touch with them and you never know what message you send out that day is going to hit, which may bring them back around. So you've, you've gotten, you got, you made your point and I definitely, definitely appreciate it. I definitely see the importance of follow-up and I think the biggest takeaway for me was do not discount them because they don't want to do business with you right now. Right now. And I, I, I kind of want to go back to what you said about create your email list because during this pandemic, this lockdown, you know, our, our industry really took a hit. The life insurance company said, it. you know, all of a sudden, you know, around April, May, Everybody went into a panic, and I'm talking in 2020. Mm -hmm. Everybody went into a panic, and the insurance companies were like, well, we're not going to insure anybody 60 and over, a lot of them. And we were like, you know, that's our business. So we took a hit, and we were like, unbelievable, right? So what it did is I thought, well, what am I going to do with this time? I have a lot of extra time. I'm working from home. On top of writing a book, which I did, I wrote a book. We'll talk about that later. I wrote a book. But what I did was I went through my email list. I literally went back through my contacts, found my client, old client list from 2012 that I had in a file. And I thought, I'm going to reach out to all these people and just see how they're doing during this pandemic. What a great opportunity during a time when people are on the couch, basically. Nobody was 
Nobody was leaving their house to get a nice email from somebody. I got a lot of them, you know, just to see like, hey, how are you doing? Are you okay? You know, and I know a lot of the people that I do business with were like, wow, that was kind of cool. You know? Yeah. I haven't heard from her in years and you know, she's just reaching out to see how I'm doing. That's that's awesome. They said to me, they were like, Hey Debs, how's it going? What are you doing? And I said, I'm working from home and you know, I'm writing a book and okay, keep us, keep me posted. So email, email list and keeping in touch with your clients or people that you've met with is so important. So important. And there's another thing that I want to come back to that I think is really important and you kind of, you flew right over it, and I was like, "Oh wait, I gotta I gotta bring her back to this because I I, I want to hear what she says about yeah. this." You had said something like, "Don't take it personal. Don't take it personal." So I wanted you to speak to that a little bit because I think when when people get into the sales conversation and they're 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 getting into a deep sell, right? Which I highly recommend you don't do. And they and the person says no, they start to get frustrated and 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 they start to. F- you know, stumble with their words and you could tell their blood pressure goes up and then, you know, and then it turns into a a mess, a a horrible mess. So speak to keeping the personal out of the conversation. How do you do that successfully? I could speak about this for hours because this is a really good subject on many levels for many things, not just sales, because The minute you take something personal, it becomes about you. And here's the deal. Sometimes I'm going to meet with people and I don't know what's going on in their life at all. And maybe they don't want to do business with me, like I said today. And that's why I check back because they might be having a bad day on the day that I'm meeting with them. They had a car accident or they had a fight with their spouse or who knows what. And it just happens that we're meeting on that day that they're not, they're just not a hundred percent there in, into life insurance right? Or, or anything I have to say. How can I take that personally when I have no idea what's going on with that person? I'm showing up trying to add as much value and do the best job I can do. I might, I might look and go, well, did I? You know, I might look at how I did things, but not take, not so much take it personally, but did I say the right things or was I correct about what I was talking about? But that's why I said you can never discount that person because we never know what they're going through. And this is so good for dating your kids. You know, I mean, my God, sometimes my kids say things to me and I'm like, if I took it personally as a mom, You know, that every time they said something horrific to me, you know, it's just the fact, you know, kids, but they're going through something at school or they're going through something with their life. And, you know, it's really good to just be curious and Mm. be like, hey, is something going on with you right now? And nine times out of 10, they'll go, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then it comes out. And then it comes out. So if I don't take it personally and I stay curious, it's kind of a win winning combination. Don't take it personally, stay curious. And if I say that mantra before I go into any situation, it's a winning combo. It's kind of like it already sets my intention, my mindset. It sets me up for success because nothing can affect or change what I'm doing. I'm going to show up with a smile no matter what. And by the way, things happen in my day. Okay. And by the way, I've had people try to sell me stuff and I'm like, no, 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 no. And then maybe a week later, I'm like, you know, I'll send them an email. Can you tell me what that was again? Like all of a sudden I'm like, well, wait a second. I may have discounted that too soon. You know, I've had that for me. So if I think about my experience and sometimes I'm not in the mood to be sold a product and my mindset, maybe I'm tired when they're talking to me. Mm. You know, maybe I'm just burned out. I don't want to buy another product. And, but then I think later on, I'm like, well, wait a second. I maybe want that, you know, like the the circumstances change. The circumstances change the every, you know, and, you know, we're just continually moving. We're just, you know, we're just continually moving. There's, there's nothing to take personally. And I, I would say that, so here's a good example too, you know, in acting, okay, you know, that's one of the toughest business, oh. you know, I have, and I have a lot of, you know, talk about rejection. Mm. So this is probably where I get my, 
Well, I got rejected by Gary Oldman, so I'm not really or Billy Crystal, so I'm not really worried about being rejected for this. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, you know, because I have those experiences, I have those stories, and but in acting, the best advice that actors get, you know, really, and I have a I have a, a child who's an actor, so is to stay in line. And if you think about what that means, so you you go and you learn, you take your acting class and, and you know, the biggest goal in that is to get your SAG card, become mm-hmm. a member of Screen Actors Guild and all mm-hmm. of that. But if you just stay in line, you don't get out of line, just stay in line. At some point, something's going to hit. It might take a year. It might take five years. It might take 10 years. But if you really want to act, you got to stay in line. And that's how I feel about sales. It's like, if you really want to sell this product, if you really believe in it, whatever it is you're trying to sell, whether it's yourself, your brand, your product, whatever it is, you stay in line. You don't, you don't deviate and then try to come back because then you just, now you're back at the back of the line. Mm. Does that make sense? Is that a good visual? That, if you're visual I get it. This? I get it. Wow. There's so many great points that you're that you're highlighting today, your persistence, staying in line, not discounting anybody, uh, follow up, creating your contact list, email list. What these are, these are powerful things. I'm recapping here a little bit, but like these are the things, folks, that you should be sh- jotting down that are, that is, ex- that is going to help you tremendously cl- help you close more sales. I mean, you may yeah. not get the sale on the first try, especially if you're selling high ticket. So well, let me just tell you, you won't. (laughs) Exactly. Unless you built that relationship. If you're getting into sales and you're saying to yourself, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is it. I'm dead. Like, and I have, and by the way, so I have a family member who just got into sales and he's selling, I think solar panels. And he's like, Oh my God, if I sell this, this, and this, we get to go to Jamaica, you know, this type of thing. And I'm like, okay, let's pull it back. <laughs> First of all, it's really hard to sell what you're selling. Yeah. I know when you go to sell these things, whether it's water machines, solar panels, whatever, and they they bring you in the room and they sit you down and they're like, they get y'all pumped up, right? And then you go out to sell it. And the reality is nobody wants to buy it. <laughs> and I'm like, so let's just pull it back. Mm. What? And let's why let's get the why and the how and then let's think about this who who really is going to buy this you know don't get so excited on jamaica quite yet Mm. because here's the deal you're gonna you're gonna knock on a hundred doors and like i said maybe for that kind of a product maybe one or two people are going to buy it yeah you got to be really persistent yeah this is the thing people just see the trip to jamaica you know they're not seeing the the complete insanity of how many no's they're going to get. Mm-hmm. And and so usually with those kind of products, and I'm talking about those multi-level yeah. water water machines, yeah. this, that. The blah, lotions. Blah, blah. Yeah, the all that stuff. The people that are the really successful in that are the ones that just never, they just stay in line. They keep going. <laughs> They're fine with making the little the, the little sales along the way. Most eighty percent of those people back out. They're like, eh, next. They move on. So you see, you know, a lot of salespeople that just they don't stick with it because they go in with the, oh, I'm gonna kick butt. I'm gonna do this. I'm right gonna away. do that. And then the minute they get ten no's, they're out. And I'm like, 10 no's, wait till you get a hundred and then you could be out. Right, right, you know? right, right. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I like what you said before Deb. you got to be passionate about what it is that you're selling. If you could be, if you're passionate about what you're selling, you're, you're going to do just fine. And you're going to, yeah. you're going to, you're going to take that next mentality and you're just going to keep marching forward just for the sake of time. I have some fun questions here. I know you saw me looking down. I have this app that just fires out really cool questions like just obscure questions and so i want to i want to throw a couple of these questions at you as we start to wrap up the show so the first question and these are completely random i just like literally swipe left it's like it's like (laughs) it's it's like the tin it's like like bumble and bumble or whatever it's like the tinder it's like the tinder of questions 
right? Swipe left, swipe right. Right. God. So I didn't even think of that. I got to tell Travis Brown, the the, the founder of Poddex, that it's like the, if it's like the Tinder of quest podcast it questions. Is. So here's a question: What entrepreneurial tricks have you discovered over the years to keep you focused and productive in your day to day busy schedule? I write everything down. Everything. Everything. As a matter of fact, usually I'd be sitting here with my notebook, even, you know, even as a guest, like, oh, I better write that down. I write everything down because the worst feeling for an entrepreneur or anybody who's in business or sales or any of this, and I, you can ask anybody, they'll say when they have to try to remember something, it's like, oh, forget it. What was that? What was that gem that they said? Or, you know, so I write everything down because, and then when I look back, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. I wanted to, I wanted to, because so much is happening so fast, especially in today's world, write it all down. Mm, I love it. I'm, and I'm old school. I still carry a, a planner that I write. I, I do not trust my device. What if I lose it? True. Very true. Okay. Oh. Next question. What have you read online recently that has inspired you? Oh, that's a good question. Online. Gosh, there are so many. <laughs> so let me think about this because, and it's so funny because I kind of keep them. If something really hits me, I keep it. So let's see what the last thing was that I kept. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was, oh, here we go. Don't be pushed around by the fears in your mind. Okay, here we go. Don't be pushed around by the fears in your mind. Be led by the dreams in your heart. Mm. That was the last thing I put in my phone. Mm. Say that one more time, Deb. That was powerful. Okay. okay. Don't be pushed around by the fears in your mind. Be led by the dreams in your heart. Mm. That's powerful stuff. That's now, that was the very last thing that I put in my phone. So if I see something like that, I'll... I'll Screenshot it. it. Yep, yep. 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 Like I said, write everything down or put it in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Last question. Who do you look to for advice or mentorship? Oh, I have so many people. My gosh. So I'm part of a group in the Tony Robbins world called the Lions Group. And I really respect and admire a lot of, there's 40 of us. And so I love that group. We have a think tank that we're all a part of. Uh, we have a mutual friend that's part of that, Nick Champagne. And so I go to those those people a lot for advice, and we we meet once a week, and we like I said, it's called the think tank, and we meet and we bounce ideas and we talk about things that are happening. So I I have a lot of respect for those people, uh, people in my industry. You know, I have a lot of people that I can call and talk to. I have heads of banks that uh, that we use. I have a guy Paul Lee that I really respect. And then, you know, I have people that aren't, I'm not close with, but like Tony Robbins and Richard Branson. Sure. I've done a lot of events with Tony and I've done a lot of stuff with uh, Richard Branson's Virgin Unite. I've traveled with him twice and done leadership programs and met people in those programs that I have a ton of respect for. And then I have people that I really respect as couples, you know, like people who have really, that appear to have or do have really good relationships. I kind of have those people on my vision board as that's the kind of relationship that I want. And so, yeah, I have a lot of people that I look to for mentorship. That's I think it's super, super important. I'm always like learning and growing and trying to find like what's the next seminar or something that I can attend to grow. I love Keep it. Growing. Yeah, don't ever stop growing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we uh, so Nick and I we host a clubhouse room every morning, and it's called Abundance uh, Incantations and Daily Intentions. And have I you know been? It's two. It's like four a.m. for me. So oh, you're on the West go. Coast. Yeah. So we're gonna start doing some in the evenings. We're gonna start doing some stuff on the evening. So it's gonna. I can't wait to have you on. And and Perfect. and he was talking a, a lot about that as well. How important it is to be a forever student. And I, I'm a firm believer that I'm a forever student. I'm never gonna know it all, but I'm never gonna stop learning or thinking that I know it all. Because you just won't. It, it'll take you. I, 10 lifetimes. There's no way. There's no, no way. I'm, I'm, I'm on a book binge right now. And so I've just read 
four four books, and one I read three times. I Which couldn't one? put it down. Uh, the Power of Intention by Wayne Dyer. I can't believe I have not read this book, but I just read it three times. It's so powerful. And and then I read The Untamed, the uh, Untethered Soul, Untethered Soul, and the Surrender Experiment. I thought was even better. It's so powerful. And I was like, I'm on a book binge right now because, you know, I, for a long time I was traveling so much. And when I get on the plane, I really like to write a lot. And so I really don't read as much as I should. And so right now I've made a commitment to myself to not travel for a year, to read at least two books a month. And I'm really focused on finishing my book and getting it out by the end of the summer and so I'm doing podcasts and I'm just staying put and to really f- focus because I traveled so much the last 10 years with work and with I traveled with Tony's group and Virgin Unite and and I just kept traveling and growing and learning which is great mm-hmm. and now I'm now I'm taking all of that and staying put good for you and it's it has been life like Oh my God. I can't even do like just to finish a book was like, Oh my God. It was so great. You, that feeling of closure, and, the feeling of accomplishment, right? No yeah, matter what it is yes. that you do. Fantastic conversation today, Deb. Uh, you know, Thank you. what did, what do we, I got to tell you real quick, what a day it has been for me. It's a Friday, the day that we're recording this. And a couple hours prior, I recorded another live episode of the Brand Doctor podcast with the former vice president of global design for Coca-Cola. Oh, wow. And the the depth of conversation that I've had with him and you today has been such a phenomenal way to close out a great week and start the weekend And because you're my last call. It has just been a tremendous tremendous experience getting to know you. Nick Champagne said, you got to have this rock star on your show. So I big shout out to Nick Champagne. Love for, him. Love him. For, Love uh, him. him and I go back is- like 20 something years. It's so funny because he was one of the first people to hire me when I was a nightclub flyer designer. <laughs> so I that, love it. That's how See, far he's a perfect, he's a perfect example of, you know, I, I met him a few times and he knew I was in New York and he like, contacted me and like, we got to get together and, you know, and I, I didn't know him well. And he, he made it a, a, a point to make a relationship with me. And I'm so glad he did because I absolutely love him and he has added so much value to my life. And I hope I've done the same for him, but you know, it's like, that's the thing. It's like, he didn't know me. I didn't know him. And all of a sudden now, you know, he's like somebody that I, he's in my life, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, and how cool is that? Yeah, and and you, so you never know where these beautiful, you know, I have, I'm so blessed because I have so many people like that in my life. It's such a blessing. And it's, it's awesome. And, and thanks Nick for, for, I know he's going to listen to this and watch this. So thanks Nick for hey. connecting us. Um, what a great conversation today. And there was so many takeaways, uh, from this conversation. And I, I just want to thank you for your time. This time is very valuable. And where can, so where can people learn more about you. Obviously you said you got this book that you're, that you're ready to complete and you know, where can people follow your journey so that when that book launches, we're all going to go grab a copy. Yeah. So my journey is going to be on Instagram. I'm not, you know, I am really kind of, I'm not a social media. Um, I'm trying really hard. My daughter's been running my social media. (laughs) And so I'm trying to learn more, uh, more about how that all works. So um, I'm on Instagram and I'll be posting like the podcasts that I'm on and, and um, what's your handle on Instagram at Deborah Driggs, my name. Easy enough. Easy enough. Yep. And, and all my handles on all social media. So LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook there, um, it's all at Deborah Driggs. Awesome. 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 Deb, I could go another hour with you easy, but we are. This is so fun. We Thank gotta, you so much we, for allowing me to be a part of your show. Uh, I'm really grateful for that. You're this very, is, I've, yeah, this has been a wonderful experience. You're very welcome. This was just a great conversation, guys. Make sure that you connect with this woman because she is an absolute powerhouse and I love her persistence. I love her energy. I know she's going to be doing some amazing things in the future and 
I'm excited to see where your future leads you because I could tell with your energy that nothing is impossible. And that is an awesome characteristic to have as a, as a human being. So God bless you. Oh, thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much. That was so kind. Oh. You're very welcome. You're very, very thank welcome. Thank you. Thank you. 